try and be my stars tonight. Fields grow anew with the spring of life. In this sheath of truth, will I wrap myself tight? The landscape it goes for miles. The myths of old they breathe in me. Got a question from Dennis. He's saying I'd like to ask you if you could give more information on the cult of Dionysus, and if possible about the Orphix. I think you're asking more for her hermetic type of uh, commentary on that. Uh, we're doing that in the Path of the Fool series, moving through card number six, seven, and eight. I'll be talking about hermetics and mysticism, Gnosticism, that kind of thing. So I think that's what your question is coming from. Although if you haven't watched my uh, Astro Theology program or read the book, go there. And also on alanslave.com you'll see a program called Divination of the Goddess Tradition. And that goes into a certain amount of this as well. So by all means, uh, go and check out that work and stay, stay close to the Path of the Fool series where more of this Hermetic uh, philosophy comes up. And Letty, you're asking, everything seems like a stupid game. I want to connect to the so-called universal God inside me, and, you know, but I have trouble. Well, so, do everybody, so does everyone. And in a sense, uh, it's difficult to extract ourselves from the consensus, what we've been taught by parents and peers, but you see, your question tells me a lot. It says, I want to connect to the so-called universal God inside me. So one has to then ask about motives. What is the motive of why you want this? Is it because you genuinely have a love of knowledge and truth, or is it you're just bored with your mediocrity of a life? And it matters because the motive is everything. It's very easy in life to work out by the time we're in our early 20s or whatever it is, that the world is pretty much like you say a stupid game, it's full of trivial things I don't want to have anything to do with, or I've tried it and I found it insipid. And I'm jaded, I'm bored, I've heard about this new age stuff, it looks vaguely interesting, I've heard about this conspiracy, yeah that looks pretty intriguing, uh, uh, and then we start dabbling, we become compulsive dabblers, we're turning the pages, we're flicking through the internet, we're surfing YouTube, you know, and we're picking up bits here, bits there, but we're really uh, treating it like a buffet. We're treating it like a smorgasbord. We're uh, treating it like, you know, here's today's flavor, you know, here's the flavor of the week. But I'm desolatory. I'm putting up my sail and wherever the hell, you know, my boat ends up, I kind of, that's what I'm about. And this, this is, you know, I'm not saying you're doing it, but there, there's, there, there is this prostituted type of attitude in which we're still trying to be pacified. And then when we feel even more unfulfilled, we start you know, seeking for what we call God. And it all sounds very great on the surface. Because a lot of people go, oh, oh, wow, that's, that's good. And you may not be looking for God in a religious setting or sense, but then you start saying, you know, I accept some of the mystical paradigms, and I've heard that you just need to put on a string of beads, or wear an orange robe, or put some ashes on your forehead, or, you know, or whatever it might be, and join some cult, and that'll happen. And then some other people who've done that realize that that's not really leading anywhere, and they're at a loss of what to do. And they're sort of stuck in the middle. Because as I say, it doesn't really, it's not really a great work of genius to work out that the world is banal, and full of things that are just a waste of time, you see. That's not the problem. Learning what, what not to do, a lot of people have achieved. It's learning what to do, and more importantly, how to do it, that becomes the problem. Because in really living the spiritual life, in really walking the Siddhartha road, we're getting further and further away from the known. We're getting further and further away from the lights of the city. We're going further up the mountain, which is very good if, if you like views, then you get a nice view. But it's also hard on the legs, there's pain involved. And as I said, you're getting further and further away from the familiar. And so this becomes then quite uh, difficult. And we forget one very vital fact. And that is, what does it really matter what the world is doing? All that matters is what I am doing. But if I'm a person 
who has placed very heavy demands on the world and have put demands on that the world should be fulfilling me and satiating me, well then, uh, you know, when I reach my Saturn return or whatever, or any age, uh, and I find out that the world is no longer coming up to speed with that, I get real jaded. What's happened? Is somebody not pushing the right buttons or pumping it? Come on. But see, the world is a very limited place of sensation. It will run out. But who ever told that you that you know, that was the dynamic? Didn't there anybody ever tell you that you had to bring meaning from within? And not just sit around passively waiting for the world to turn us on? So this is the turning point that needs to be understood. The world is not there to turn you on. You are there to turn yourself on. And so it's wonderful to find out that you know the, the pleasantries of the world fade to grey or that you're not necessarily engaged in those things that other people are interested in. But then you better bloody find something quick that does engage you and that does represent who you are on this planet. And turn the energy around to say that I don't give a damn if I'm living in you know, the arse end of, of, of somewhere. I will find what it is I need to do and I will do it because I'm going to find something that mirrors who I am if there's a self there at all so in some people there isn't even a self so no matter what they find themselves involved in it's going to be vapid but the well-meaning person says you know I will find something to do artistically creatively philosophically whatever psychologically and I will get involved in it and it doesn't matter to me what the world does I no longer see the world whether, whether, you know, whether it turns me on or has that multiplicity of things we're talking about, the endless variegatedness of our, you know, I don't care if it's like that or, I'm not looking at the world to turn me on. I'm doing my own thing my own way. And you find that you bring meaning from within. In other words, you do not expect the world to be fresh and new every day. You just make sure your mind is fresh and new every day. Your attention. This is a whole different sense of setting. So I hope that gets to the heart of what you're talking about. And as far as God goes, well, you get to that higher, well, I hate to use the word higher, but let's loosely use that word. You get to that state, that pure, let's use the word pure, deeper, more real. You get to those states that you're calling God by doing that, by first reconnecting with your own self and, and not being so hyper addicted to the world and its stimuli. This is crucial. Daro, you have a question saying, do you agree with Beaumont, Commons Beaumont, that Israel was in Scotland, Ireland, and Jerusalem was Edinburgh, was Avery Solomon's temple? The answer is yes. I mean, I dedicated chapters to Commons Beaumont in the first volume of the Irish Origins, so go and read that. Uh, in fact, the entire Irish Origins work was conceived and written as an homage to Commons Beaumont, so I'm, I'm a huge believer. I wouldn't exist as the person I am without his work. He's one of my greatest mentors. So definitely head over there and check out uh, the last chapters of uh, the Irish Origins book, uh, the Kindle book on, on Amazon. And you can go to the Irish Origins of Civilization.com website where I've got all these free appendices, uh, some of it uh, featuring Beaumont's work as well. <laughs>